Coming up, we'll join the Silver Lake Sportsman Club in Southeast Wisconsin for some infield training. Hello, I'm Dean Romano. It's time for Outdoor Wild. take a moment to thank some of our sponsors, Stainless Products in Summers, Wisconsin, where you'll find some of the best made quality sanitary process equipment. That's Stainless Products since 1972. Friendly folks and good service. Also by... It's pretty amazing when you consider that seven years ago, we didn't have the treatments we have now. We cure 80% of children with cancer. If you think about that, I mean, go back 50 years, we were curing 20 to 30%. This is the miracle story of modern medicine. We understand what makes this cancer tick. And of course, without donors from around the world, this just couldn't happen. And there's one thing we're focused on here at St. Jude, and that's beating this thing. All right, I'm standing here with Brian from the Silver Lake Sportsman Club. And Brian, tell us a little bit about your, your blood trailing and some of the stuff you guys are involved in, why you're doing it this yeah. way. Well, we, we really want to impact the next generation. Yeah. We've got a young generation coming up, and we, we want to get them involved in the outdoors. We want them dealing with conservation. We want them to be a little bit more in touch with nature. Yeah. You know, Aldo Leopold, one of the great conservationists back in the 1930s, you know, Aldo Leopold said, you know, hunting ranks right up there with fishing, or I should say, with farming and with bird watching. It was one of the three best ways for mankind to stay in touch with the land. Right. And we're just trying to get them back in touch with the land again. So in yeah. terms of the deer trail, you know, we're tracking a wounded deer. We're trying to track it out. And, I, you know, I, I created some fake blood with corn syrup and a little bit of red food coloring. And uh, I just laid it out and just made the point to them that sometimes when you're tracking a wounded deer, most of the blood will be on the ground. Some yeah. of it might be on branches, maybe waist high. Right. Some of it may be splashed down the side of a tree. So I said, don't always be looking on the ground when you're tracking a wounded animal. Yeah. Some of that may be, and, and depending upon, you know, if, if the deer splashed the left side of the tree, well, that deer is turning left yeah. as opposed to going straight. Right. You know, so just some of those little clues. If, if the blood is bright red, it's oxygenated, so you probably shot it in the lungs or near the heart. If it's a really dark rust-colored blood, it's, it's shot lower in the stomach. We call it a gut shot. Yeah. Uh, may have been hit in the liver, maybe the lower stomach, and the deer may get away. You know, right. we don't want that to happen. We prefer right. the shot to be clean, that the kill would be clean, but sometimes that doesn't happen, and you've got to track the deer out and find out where that blood's taking you. Right. So. Well, you know, too, Brian, in, in my opinion, hunters do a lot for land regeneration right. and wildlife habitat. Yes. And uh, the, really the funds raised for this, it, it goes a long way. Through licensing, through ammunition, through equipment. Uh, Wisconsin's nine-day gun deer season pumps more money into the economy it's a nine times more money into the economy than the Green right. Bay Packers do off their total year of merchandising. Wonderful. I mean, the, the impact to the restaurants, to the hotels, you know, to the state in terms of guys buying their licenses. Right. I mean, it's just, it's incredible what a nine-day gun deer season does in terms of injecting money into this state. Right. It's amazing. Uh, Wisconsin's phenomenal for that. We, we've been having, now, here we are, 2016, and looking like it's going to start out to be a phenomenal year. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. uh Hopefully a mild winter. The deer, yeah. the deer have recovered hopefully yeah. fairly well. I mean, some of our numbers are down up there. The winter was a little bit more severe than, than normal. Right. But uh, I know southern end of the state, everything was still looking good. The numbers are still looking pretty good. There. Right, right. Yeah, and that's one of the things, too, and I know people get a little confused by that because, they'll, you know, you got different people that, that may have different beliefs like, oh, okay, okay, the herds are down, they're not doing good. Yeah. That depends on where you're at. Yeah. And then there's yeah. a reason for that. It isn't necessarily... Yeah over hunting or anything it yeah. could be a lot of reasons yeah. uh violets county i know had a lack and uh I'm yeah, gonna right be... next door to me in forest county yeah. okay yeah, so, yeah. And i'll be uh, i'll probably be working with them a little bit this summer but it looks like the herds are starting to come back a little bit good. there now no it's good so you know but uh, you know there's a lot of reasons i hate to point fingers i don't like doing that yeah. but it's not not just because of uh uh over hunting. and it's... the north no uh, way up in the northern end of the state 
there's not there's no corn. Right. It's mostly hay fields. Right. Maybe cabbage, maybe potatoes. Oh, you get a severe winter up there, those deer are literally peeling bark off of trees and yeah. chewing on pine needles. Whereas on the southern end of the state, you still got leftover corn. Right. You've got acorns. You know, I mean, there's some acorns up there. But you've got a lot more feeding material down here in the southern end of the state than you do up north. And all it takes is one or two bad winters, and those deer are starving. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I, I, my uncles help feed them out coming in February and March when right. the snow's bad. He'll bring in truckloads of potatoes and truckloads of pumpkins, sure. whatever he can get his hands on. And I've seen as high in his yard, you know, out in his open field, 70, 80 deer coming in to feed in sure. March. Wait, just waiting for that grass to come in. Yeah. They've got nothing. Yeah, they got to eat. And, and they got to eat something. So, yeah. so a lot of local involvement up there in terms of helping feed the deer and get them through till spring. Right, right. And with some of the different types of weather, uh, with climate, yeah, you know, we've had some winters up there that they'll be massive for a while and they'll be gone. Right. You know, and it's just, yep. it's... It's, it's an ebb and flow. It's yeah. an ebb and flow. Yeah. 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 Well, we're doing good. It seems, things seem to be going well. You guys are doing a great job, and that was a, yeah. a great. T I, I thought it was wonderful the way you bring the kids through there. It's, the youth is really great. They learn learn at a young age. Yeah, you know, it's phenomenal. And they are the next generation, right? And, and if they don't come up in this, right, it's gonna it's gonna eventually stop. Yeah, there's not a lot of hunter safety courses that take the people out in the fields like you guys do. That, that's a good thing. Yeah, and uh, just so a lot a lot higher numbers of women coming through yeah. our safety classes right now too. That's good though. Uh, it's, I was talking to one of the guys in Madison, they're upwards of about 35, 40% now. Good. The classes are pretty much women, which yeah. is it's a good thing. Uh, sure, absolutely. I, mean, yeah. I brought my daughter up into it, yeah. so yeah. it's a good thing. Well, you know, too, the other thing is, so people know now, because I'm one of the old timers in Wisconsin, I was grandfathered in under that law, but <clears throat> Hunter's safety course, and I, here's a guy doing a little bit of with the show <laughs> i have to take this course with you guys oh, okay because when we go out of state to hunt right i gotta have that right you know and anything out west they're asking you yeah and some states even if you have it you still have to take their hunter safety class like i see the colorado wyoming yeah you may have a hunter safety i'm, I'm a hunter safety instructor i've been yeah. a safety instructor for 10 years now okay here in the state but if i go out west to visit my family in wyoming and i want a mule deer hunt i still have to sit through one of their hunter safety classes oh, okay. even though i'm an instructor because they want to make sure you know, you weren't learning at some rinky-dink little, you know, oh, training see. session in another state. They okay. want to make sure you know, hey, here's our rules. Yeah. You're in our state. you got to know our rules. You're coming yeah. through our class. Okay. Now, now some of the classes, and I'm not, I don't know about all the states, and yeah. I would not advise people to do that here. I would advise them to come out here and take your <laughs> course. You guys got a phenomenal course. Thank you. But uh, some of the uh, uh, people, if they want to go out of state to hunt, some of them states do offer online courses, right? Yes, they do. They do? Yes, they do. So if the people say, well, I want to go hunt this animal, but I don't have time to go through this course, can I take an online course? You should be able to hop they, on there. Whatever the state, Department of Natural Resources, or DNR website, they should be able to find something there okay. for online. Okay. And Wisconsin's got it online, too, but they still need you to come in and field day and physically handle the guns. Okay. So it's not like you're going to get certified just by taking the online class. You still have to come to a meeting and actually work the actions. Right. Know what ammunition's for what gun. And they want a hands-on component there before they give you certification. Sure. But yeah, most of it can be done online. That's okay. true. That's yeah, true. I yeah, I was not certain of it, but I just yeah. for for those that may be wondering that might want to hunt out of state and don't yeah. really want to take the course out of state. And for people here in southeastern Wisconsin, at least, usually they're heading up to Milwaukee. There's yeah. there's a big DNR, usually about eight to twelve instructors up there and they've got a two conference rooms set aside in Milwaukee, so you can come in from all over, just drive to Milwaukee and do your hands-on, okay. and you're done and certified. Okay. So. Well, if people want to take your course with uh, Silver Lake Sportsman, God, now they don't have to be a member, they can just contact no, you no. guys? Yeah. Um, most DNR hunter safety classes are usually set up uh, through the DNR website, and they're broken out by county. Okay. So you can just hop on the DNR website, go and find the county, and it'll give you a listing of what classes are being offered in that area. I know here at Silver Lake Sportsman's Club, we usually do one in the spring, which is usually March, April time frame. Okay. And we'll teach one more class in the fall, which is usually August, September. Okay. So we try and finish up the spring class, like right now, right before turkey season. Yeah, starts. yeah, yeah. And then the fall season, we'll do August into September, because both season starts middle of September. Right. And most of the guys here are out bow hunting. So we want to make sure we're done by, you know, that... Second week, of, second week of September. So that's usually when we set our classes here. Uh, but you do have a website yes, for Silver Lake Sports. And you also have another one for uh, West of the Eye, you call it. Well, West of the Eye is for pretty much west of I-94 in Kenosha County. Okay. It's westoftheeye.com. Okay. And they just they just focus on news here in this particular area in western okay. Kenosha County. So okay. from Lake, Lake Geneva on the edge of Walworth County all the way back towards I-94. And that's where most of our students are coming from. We're here on the west side right. of Kenosha County, so right. that's that's it. Just appeals to them. So what we finish sure. up a class. I take a couple photos, whether they're doing the shotgun, whether they're shooting twenty-two rifle, whether we're doing the blood trail, 
and we're bringing the deer back when we're done or fence crossing, I'll take four or five pictures and we'll do a group photo and that goes to westoftheeye.com and within a week or two they'll have it up on the website saying, hey, we just finished a class out here at Silver Lake Sportsman's Club and Good. And, and, and then the students are there just like to see their own faces online anyway. Oh, sure. So it's exciting for them. Yeah. Hey, I'm online, you know, kind of thing. So, but it, but it is, it's nice. It's nice if you guys, the field training is wonderful. So Thanks. Yeah. It, I mean, it's all volunteer time for us, yeah. but, but we enjoy it. We're, yeah. we're outdoor people to begin with. You exactly. Know, like being out here. So. Yeah. And that's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. Share the joy. <laughs> you know, to share exactly. the joy and the love. So. For sure. It's good. For sure. Thank you so much, Brian. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. All right. I'm standing here with Dave Lois of the Silver Lake Sportsman Club. Uh, Now, you are involved with Conservation Congress. I'm also on the Conservation Congress. I'm the chairman for Kenosha County. I'm on the Bear Committee for the Conservation Congress. And uh, heavily involved in that as well. So. Okay. How are things going with Conservation Congress? It seems to look good. I was at one of your last meeting. Yeah. Uh, and the nice thing is, well, people need to know how it works because Conservation Congress isn't in every state. Right. And they show they're going to be able to find online. They're going to be asking, wondering. We're the only state that has it. That has it, period. Well, what it is is we are a liaison to the, to the DNR. We okay. help advise them on different hunting and fishing questions is basically what it boils down to. Okay. We had our spring hearing last Monday. It's always just like a Monday in April every year. And uh, every year, two officers in each county are up for up for re-election. Okay. There's 72 counties in the state. And it's always a three-year and a two-year term. Every year is up for re-election. I see. Okay. And so this year, I was up for re-election. I got voted back in. So, um, and then we, are, we have our annual convention next month in May. Okay. Second second weekend in May is our convention. This year it's up in Manitowoc. Okay. And uh, we basically go over all the questions we talked about in the spring hearing. Okay. We go over that, and then we have some guest speakers. Usually the governor's there, and and so on and so forth. And we have a little awards banquet at that at that meeting also. Okay. Now also uh, there was some funds for Wisconsin that got put in the Wisconsin this year, I believe. Which mm-hmm. was, uh, a good number, I think, okay. to help out. Do you know anything about that? Or? I I don't know that much about it. It is um, for it is for conservation. I'm sure a lot of it will be good for sportsmen. Yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. So uh, any any funds that we get is is good for the sportsmen, obviously. Yeah. And you know, this hunter safety class that we do every year, I have a good group of instructors that help me out yeah. every year. Right. And uh, I get a lot of positive feedback from the way we do it, so I, I think it works out good. I think field training is, is wonderful. I mean, yeah. it goes. I think it kind of goes with the old theory. You got you got a lot of book training, which is good, but mm-hmm. there's nothing better than hands-on, hands-on. training in life. Hands-on, really. hands-on you know, is the best training. You know, exactly. The, the old question used to go to the old uh, the old guys. Well, what school did you go to? Well, I went to the school of hard knocks. So. Yeah. So same way. <laughs> yeah. Same way with same way with field training. Yeah. Nothing better better than actually getting out there. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So. Uh, all right. Well, I want to talk to you about that. I got another question here, and this is kind of interesting. Do you know anything about the elk being planted in Black River, and what the, is the reason to bring ba- elk back in the state of Wisconsin? The whole the, the whole thing is we've already got an elk herd, elk elk herd up in up by Clam Lake. You don't Clam know Lake. about that. Okay. Yep. The reason we want to do more in Black River Falls is we're trying to get the elk back into Wisconsin because okay. at one time they were native to Wisconsin. Oh, they were. Oh, okay, yeah. That was back, that was going to be back yeah. in the 1800s. There was elk. You know, all over. Okay. But all right. We're trying to get them introduced back into Wisconsin. Yeah. And so, if we do it in two different places, our hope is to eventually have a hunt there in Wisconsin. Sure. For elk. Sure. So that'd be that'd well, be who nice. Who would like doing that? Yeah. You know. Exactly. That saves me going out of state, and I'm still grandfathered in. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. Dean Romano has to take the course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the old timer. I'm grandfathered in here in this state, but yeah. outside of that, I'm not. So. Yeah, outside of that, you gotta have it. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. the same way. So I had to take yeah. it. I mean, I had to take it too, obviously, when I first started. So Brian, did he pass? <laughs> yeah, well, I took it before Brian even was. Okay. Yeah, this was a long time ago. Okay. Long time ago. All right. Now I also know you do a lot of turkey hunting. I do. How did you do well this year? Oh, well, actually, actually, coming actually, up for spring. I. Um, I have my week starting next next week. Next week, yeah. Next Wednesday yeah. is my week, and yeah. uh, hopefully, I haven't been seeing much where I hunt, but I'm hoping that yeah. next week I see something. Yeah, It'd be nice. I know, and we've talked about getting together. I haven't yeah. gotten out there with you yet, but I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. So. We'll, we'll see if we can hook up. We'll, yeah, I'll let you, I'll give you a holler, let you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, if we can do it, that'd be great. That yeah, would be. Yeah. Yeah.
All right, so Dave, I think you guys got a tremendous program here. Thank uh, you. you guys do a wonderful job. This is my Thank second you. time back. This is the first time we're going to have it online yeah. and get people to see what Silver Lake Sportsman Club is all about. Good. So good. good appreciate deal. it, Dean. Oh, we appreciate everything you're doing for us. Yeah. So. Good. Thank good. you. Good. Very good. And now let's take a look at some infield training. So for those of you who don't know, if if you do shoot a deer and you're tracking it and the blood is bright red, it's oxygenated blood. So it's usually coming, more than likely coming out of a lungs, a lung shot. If it's dark red, it's what we call uh, a gut shot. It's been shot the lower end of the stomach, maybe down towards the liver area. And it's a lot darker. It's almost a really dark rust colored looking blood. But if it's bright red, chances are you know it got hit up high, it's oxygenated, so it's either lung or near the heart. And chances are, hopefully, the deer doesn't have to run too far before it's down. Uh, a gut shot deer can take you for miles. A lot of miles. I have a simulated blood trail, okay? I use corn syrup with a lot of food coloring. Uh, a bunch of red and hopefully a drop or two of blue, uh, but it's going to look like fairly bright red oxygenated blood. All right, so I shot a deer over here. So between here and where we started trimming out the brush over here, I want you guys to line up. We're going to walk slowly. Whoever finds a spot of blood has to mark it. The rest of the group will move forward and move on from there. Okay, until the next spot of blood is found, and then the person in the back can come forward. Everybody line up between me and the edge of the map where we, we just trimmed all this. You guys can just slide over here, right here up near the tree, right there, stop. Now, do you see anything right now? All right, whoever sees that blood marks it. Everybody else, we got a spot. Right here. We know the deer's heading this way. So we're gonna take our time, we're gonna walk slowly, and we're just, I want all of you guys to start walking forward till we find the next spot of blood. Whoever sees it, we're not in a hurry here. We're not in a hurry at all. Because sometimes you might walk right past the blood and not even know it's there because you're walking too fast. So slow down. Stand the ground. Blood where? All right, mark that spot. Stay there. You can come on up now. All right, okay, mark that spot. Everybody else keep moving up. Sometimes when you're tracking a deer, the blood isn't always on the ground. Sometimes it's on a tree branch. Sometimes it's splashed on the side of a tree. So when you look right here, you see we've got blood on the side of the tree right here. So if the blood's on this side of the tree, which way is that deer going now? It's going that way. All right, so now we're going to turn and head out towards the road. All right, and I know this deer splashed really high. That was my fault when I put it on there. It should have gone a little bit lower, but uh, that's the way it goes. All right, so we're heading towards the road now. You guys see where those uh, those birch trees are? They kind of fork off the bottom, about eight inches in diameter. We're going to start walking straight across that way. See if you guys can find some more blood on the way for Okay? What do you got? Okay, which way is it running? Alright, so we're going to follow the edge of the road down, look over the edge and see if there's any deer laying down on the edge of the water. But given the line of blood that you've got, you got a rough idea what direction it's going, right? Okay? down. Some of it's dripped down on the ground, but some of it's up high here too, right? So your blood's not always going to be on the ground, right? All right, we'll keep following this trail down. Look, right now we know the deer's running down the edge of the roadway, okay? Right now, this deer is starting down. Where? Got blood there on the rocks? Okay, mark it. Blood where? Okay. 
There you go. Your deer's off to the left. Oh, I've gone down. Okay. So there's your deer. All right. <laughs> Somebody's been taking the samples. <laughs> all right. Don't tell the next groups. All right. All right. Try not to there's a basic blood trail lesson, kind of sort of. All righty. Hope it helps you a little bit. Don't step in anything on the way out. Thank you. Thank you. My first nice seven pointer I shot probably about 13, 14 years ago. We'd just gotten an inch of snow on the ground that morning. Yeah, thank goodness. give you a patch and when you get this this is your small game license for this year you do not have to buy small game license okay oh, really? you're gonna go hunting squirrels or over with this and after about a month you're gonna get a little card in the mail from the DNR two, two or one all uh, right you're only gonna get one okay what I would suggest when you get that card get it laminated because that's your only card for life that's your card forever 